The feature race of the meeting is the Dali July Cup, and with a purse this year of £510,000, it's attracted some overseas sprinters to try and win what is leg seven of the Global Sprint Challenge. The last 35 renewals have seen 15 three-year-olds successful, and 25 winners have got on to be crowned Sprinter of the Year in the World Thoroughbred Rankings. Plenty have had a successful career at stud, and none more so than 2003 winner Oasis Dream. We relive that momentous win here at the July course and discuss how his career at stud has progressed with two of the people that know him best. He didn't come to us till April the 5th, I believe, of his two-year-old year. He came from Ferrans, he'd been held up, I'm not sure he'd been ill or something, but he, he, he had no other reason to be late to come in. And so I was always slightly a little bit behind with him. And he, he was a horse whose favorite activities were eating and sleeping. So he carried a great huge amount of condition and always had a huge, big rib cage and middle on him even when he raced. So, I mean, I'll be quite honest, when we took him to Salisbury finally for the first time, as Hughesy said, he plain blew up with a furlong to run, which is slightly shameful on the trainer. But, you know, he was also, although by Green Desert, he was out of a mare, a really good mare called Hope by Dancing Brave. And he had her mentality. He was just incredibly laid back, very lazy in his work, which is not like the sire Green Desert at all. They tended to be quick in the bridle, kind of anything to grind their teeth and be edgy horses. He was the opposite. So. Apart from I didn't want to bully him, he was at Manton, you know, so we just took him to Salisbury nearby and uh, he blew up and Hughesy said, well, maybe we go another furlong. So then we went to Sandown where he ran a superb race and they broke the juvenile record, but he was second to a, a, a race fit horse of George Strawbridge's actually. And he ran great and, uh, and by then we'd finally got him fit and ready and, uh, and then we went off and won a nice maiden well at Nottingham. That was, that was a very impressive performance. Was it at that point you knew six furlongs for the rest of the season was right and you weren't going to try and go back up in trip again? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it was a stiff seven at Sandown, and he was pretty fit for that, but he didn't quite see it out as a two-year-old. I mean, it's not like it's a flat, easy seven with the four furlongs up the hill. So we went back to six, and then obviously from Nottingham, we thought, right, you know, he's, he's a very smart horse. He's come together. As I say, he'd come in late, you know. It wasn't like he'd been with us all winter or anything. And uh, then we went for the Middle Park and they ran a phenomenally fast time and he went and beat a pre-morning winner. So it was a pretty hot Middle Park. They, he broke the juvenile record in the Middle Park. Um, it, was, it was hugely impressive. And was that the point you knew you had a, a, a real star sprinter on your hands? Or were you tempted for next season to go up in trip and come back for something like the Guineas? Because he, he had quotes of 16 to 1 for the Guineas. Yeah. I think what was interesting was that, again, I had a difficult spring the next year with some of the horses, a little cold and wet there, and he didn't come to himself. And his coat didn't come right as a three-year-old, so he'd been champion two-year-old, won his middle part fast, he knew he had tons of speed. But when it came to the guineas, he, he was nowhere where I wanted him, so it, we never even thought about a guineas. We actually only just had him ready to run at Royal Ascot, and that was when the King's Stand on the Tuesday, I believe, was a group two then. But he was also engaged in the St. James Palace. And Prince Khaled, his owner and breeder, is extremely knowledgeable on his pedigrees. And we had what would be described on the, sun, uh, on the uh, Saturday night before Sunday morning declaring for the Tuesday, where we're going to run in the King's Stand over five against older horses or the mile with three-year-olds uh, in the St. James Palace. And I was strongly for the King's Stand, and Prince Carlo was quite correctly for the St. James Palace. And uh, we'd say it was an intense conversation. And uh, in the end, because I was with the horse and I had a difficult spring, he said, right, you're with him, you do what you think's best. But we'll see after that. And actually, he, he went to the, to the King's Stand, and, uh, and once again, he ran a great race, but the furlong pole caught him out, and he got, uh, he got tired. So two years running, we've done it. <laughs> but uh, Hughesy said, don't worry, we'll be fine next time. And of course, it was won by the great Choisir, who just looked like a, a different species of creature with this backside you could play billiards on the top of that. And he just literally creamed them, and obviously came back Golden Jubilee. We then knew we want to go for the July Cup, a stiff six at Newmarket, and um, he trained beautifully from the King's stand to there. And so it was, it was quite a showdown, a really exciting race. 
And, uh, you know, Johnny Murder led us a good, strong dance. Had but you Rich... sat down with a plan before the July Cup to think, how are we going to beat this Schwazi? Or did you think that Oasis Dream would do the talking and take you there? Well, I think in the case, you know, you've got someone like Richard Hughes on, and he knows the horse, he knows the competition. The last thing you can do is confuse them with instructions. You let them ride it the way they find it. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to keep the other horse tabs on him and then nail him in the last furlong. He didn't want to start getting involved two, three furlongs down. It's not Richard's style anyhow. And he knew that Oasis Street had his phenomenal turn of foot. So I do leave it to jockeys. And look, the shorter the distance, the less to talk about, you know. Uh, but he did it well, and it was an exciting, fast race and an amazing time. And as we know, that's a race that makes stallions. Simon, you were here to welcome Oasis Dream when he came here all the way back in 2003, the end of 2003. What was he like settling in? Well, first of all, it was actually lovely to get him. Uh, you know, it's to get a champion European two-year-old who then backed that up by winning a group one as a three-year-old. He was a very special four horse for us to have. Um, with the speed element, he was always going to be a sexy horse for the commercial breeders. Um, he arrived here as a very settled horse, actually, uh, considering that he is a sprinter, and he fitted in very readily. And, and is it, um, goodness, he's a lovely walker. Absolutely. And that's the other, the other thing to him, actually, um, if you consider what sprinters normally walk like, he, he is an exception. Great walker, great overstride. And he's a massively powerful horse. Immediately striking, you can see that the moment he approaches, can't sure. you? Very good looking, takes very much after his father, Green Desert. Uh, July Cup winner, of Yeah, course. July Cup winner himself. Um, physically, this horse, when you look at him, he's a sprinter all over. He has great hind quarter, great second thigh, uh, very strong forearm. Not overly big, he just stands 15 three hands, um, but he's all power. 2013 was a, a really good year. Would you say it was his, his best yet? Leading, correct me if I'm wrong with anything, leading two year old. Um, European two-year-old side with, with prize money. Yes. And leading Sire European side with winners in, in total. Yes, he had over 140 individual winners last year, which was quite phenomenal. And he's now been the leading, he's been the leading sire in Europe by winners the last two years. Uh, prior to that, he was the leading British base sire 2009-2011 um, by prize money. Mm. So, you know, he, he is an exceptional sire. And has interest uh, grown even in this small amount of time since then as a result and and as well um, does that allow you to, to increase stud fee all those sorts of things? Yes he started life at 25,000 as he now stands at 85,000 obviously uh, the, the higher the fee goes um, it, it, it is it, it reduces the number of mares that the horse is actually going to cover there are there are less breeders at that level to pay 85,000 pounds. I see and does it also mean that, that you here can be a little more selective with which mares go onto his book, or, or, is, or is that not how you operate? Um, we, yes, we, 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 we limit the number of mares that the stallions generally cover. Uh, this horse covers in the region of 130. Um, uh, on the basis that I, I, I think we send something like 20, 25, possibly 30 to him a year. Um, and then we, the, the 100 outside nominations is what we try to work on. And he, it's fantastic to see him in the flesh because he is so striking to look at. Is that something he passes on? If, I, if I'm stood in the paddock and I see some two-year-olds coming round, what's it that makes me say, ah, that's an Oasis dream? Uh, he stamps them, yeah. basically, in a nutshell. <laughs> he stamps them. What you see here is what you will see on the race course. They tend to be uh, very muscular, good quartered horses. Uh, you know, some, sometimes people will criticise because they're not overly big, but um, by the same token, I actually like to see them like that because that's the sire and, and, and the, you know, that's Green Desert as well. So mm. very, very pleased to see them like that. And I think he just sent out his 40th group winner at the weekend, Fountain of Youth. Yes, Fountain of Youth, uh, one over five furlongs in Ireland. We were delighted with that. Um, comes back to the sprinting. He has a July <laughs> Cup entry. I don't think he's going to go, which is a shame. So we could continue this green desert uh, mm. oasis dream. You know, the only, the, only uh, the, the sad part, he's not had a July Cup winner yet. Main Aim was second uh, and ran a very, very good race to be second. Um, obviously, we would like 2009, him to. 2009, is yeah, that? Yeah. Obviously, we would like him to have a July Cup winner at some stage. Well, that's, that's the next goal. That's the next goal.